Welcome, everyone, to the Apex Sunday podcast, hosted by myself, Robert Ross, and co-hosted by John Dowsett. We're a couple of F1 fans and MotoGP fans, and we talk about Formula One, MotoGP, and motorsport-related events, news, and races. And John, today we're talking about the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, and before we talk, talk about that, it's another street circuit. We're both not big fans of street circuits. What do you think of this street circuit in particular? I, I don't like street circuits. I, so there's no exception I, for this one then? <laughs> there's no exception. I mean, the only, the only exception for me is Monaco, and I think it gets a buy. Um, everything else. Um, I have a really strong feeling. We, we were talking about going to, you know, the traditional wonderful tracks and Bethel saying, let's go to the wonderful traditional tracks. He, and, he actually brought up uh, going to Bathurst in Australia, which would be which spectacular. Would be phenomenal. Um, yeah. And the simple fact is, is, is those are destinations. Whereas if you can put it in the middle of a city like Las Vegas, you're guaranteed to have huge turnout. Right. And that's all it is. It's just laziness and it's taking, it's making the sport a business rather than what it should be. Yeah. Liberty seems to be favoring street circuits because like you said, Las Vegas, we have Miami, we have Azerbaijan, uh, and Spa is apparently possibly on the chopping block, you know, which to me is... Bernie wouldn't have allowed it. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're not up to our standards now and all this kind of stuff. It's like, that's not the reason to destroy the race. I mean, this is Spa. This is probably the best circuit, you know, Spa and Suzuka of the current modern circuits, you know, before what they used to be probably the two best that we have. And they're thinking of dropping spa. I just, it's just nonsense to me. Right. And if they do more street races, that's almost like a formula E type of thing. So or yeah, Indy, not, or Indy, Indy, right? Yeah. Yeah. But well, we'll see where the sport goes, but uh, I agree with you. Liberty, you know, when they first came in, it was sort of, Oh, we got a fresh perspective and they're going to promote the sport more and all that. And they certainly have promoted it more. It's gotten more popularity, but, it's suffering from that sort of American style popularity where they suck out all the substance and just give you the, the, the face of it. <laughs> it's, it it's, losing it, it's losing its elite status, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I remember seeing when F1 was broadcast on, say, NBC or something, they go, and here we have Fernando Alonso. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. They spend a half an hour speaking about stuff and they'd say nothing, basically. Yeah. Jack Villeneuve. Yeah. Jack yeah. Villeneuve. Look no, at Vel him. No. <laughs> Jack no, Villeneuve. Villeneuve. No, Villeneuve. They called him Villeneuve because they couldn't say Villeneuve, so they called him Villeneuve. I think the Ray Hall, Seriously. not the Ray Hall, uh, the Unser Senior called him Villeneuve as well. <laughs> and and I and I did attempt to watch the Indy 500. Mm. Um, I did not. And that was very interesting how they were pronouncing some names. Oh, yeah? Did like, they get Grosjean proper yet? Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, Roman, Roman uh, Grosjean. Grosjean. Still. Still. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Grosjean. Grosjean. Anyway, Incredible. doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, I'm not keen on, on the circuit. Uh, once again, I was pleasantly surprised at how little there was in the way of driving at a wall. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that kinds. this, for this circuit, I, it's sort of a mix. Like there are some very wide areas and then they're extremely narrow. So I, it, it looks good. I kind of like that. The races have been very chaotic until this one in particular, like you said, not smashing into walls and so forth. So as far as street circuits go, I think Monaco and this one, pretty acceptable to me. Uh, Saudi, too dangerous, I thought. Uh, Miami, not not a big fan of. We don't know about uh, Las Vegas. We'll see next year. Right. But anyways, let's move on to some topics from qualifying. Qualifying, we had a red flag situation once again, which... Street mm -hmm. circuits, as we've seen, encourage red flags, safety cars, and all that kind of thing. My question to you, and I thought of this, when they threw the red flag towards the end of the Q1 or Q2 session, I think it was Q1, should they give everyone who has to come in and lose that time at least one extra lap to make their time? Because 
you know, people run out of time all the time at the end because of this, someone else doing that. What do you think? Because I know in, uh, I think it's NASCAR, <clears throat> maybe Indy, but I think it's NASCAR where if they, you know, those two, co- those two series are full of yellows and, you know, safeties and all this kind of thing that they do say, okay, well, we can't do a race in one lap or qualifying. Let's give them an extra in, in NASCAR, I think it's five laps, but I think they should allow at least one extra lap in those kind of situations. What do you think? It becomes too wishy-washy and where do you draw the line? I think it just drives home the fact that you've got to put a lap in early. You've got to bank. Yeah. That's There's, all there is. Right. And, and, and you've had, and the drivers have had time to practice the track. They know the track. Yes, it might not be rubbered in, and yes, you're going to get better. Uh, um, you're going to get faster laps at the end of the sessions. However, yeah, that's why they how, do it, right? But if there's a red, but if there's a red flag, then everybody has lost out on that. So if you haven't banked one, tough. it's your fault, your problem. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, that's why I look yeah. at it. Yeah, I think that makes sense too. So I think I, I'd have to change my opinion then. <laughs> you know, they should go out earlier put in a banker, at least you ensure you're into the next session, at least in qualifying right. and go from there. So, okay. We also saw that Albon implied that uh, Alonzo Rosberg or Schumacher him on the, on the final lap by going off. It's never been totally proven about Rosberg. Lewis certainly thinks that it was intentional. <laughs> Albon Schumacher, th- Schumacher admitted to doing it. He admitted yeah. to doing it. Albon at the, I don't know what I haven't read what he said afterwards because I know in the heat of the moment it's very easy to think these things. So mm-hmm. I have my doubts about Alonso doing that. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, Alan, yeah. Alonso had nothing to to really win by doing that. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it was just a heat of the moment thing, and Albon's probably right. fine with him. Yeah. So. I mean, if you go to turn in, in and you can't turn in and you take the escape road, you take the escape road. Yeah, it's better yeah. than crashing. <laughs> but. But for them to fly the red flag over that, I think that was a bit rich. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And then we had first stop in asking why he wasn't out in front of Perez in qualifying once again, because leading up to this week, we had all this nonsense in the press about, well, Red Bull is supporting both their drivers for the championship, and yeah. Perez has a chance and all this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure he does. That's mm-hmm. nonsense. I can't remember what Red Bull said, but I think it was just you know, the chaos of qualifying that Verstappen didn't get to go out. But as we saw in the race, it didn't really matter, did it? No. And so. propagandic, propagandic speech, anything that comes out of the pits of Red Bull, I don't even bother listening to anymore. No, no. <laughs> I mean, every corporation has its sort of corporate speak. But, you know, I remember uh, Ron Dennis, Ron speak was known for that, right? But Christian mm-hmm. Horner has taken it to another level of, I really admired Horner. Yes. I, I really admired Horner 15 years ago, 20 years ago, but right. not now. Right. I have no time for him now. All right. So let's move on to the race. So for the race, John, another two virtual safety cars. Again, this is a thing about street circuits. We had reliability with the Ferraris and we had team orders. The safety cars, at least it wasn't a full safety car this time, but I do remember when, I, when they started throwing these again, another race with that is uninterrupted, that's not, <laughs> sorry, that is interrupted by safety cars or virtual or otherwise. I thought, you know, I remember the days when even in Monaco, a crane would come by, pick it up, boom, 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 boom. And we would rarely get safety cars, like, right. but now it's almost every race. Yeah. And is that because they're out doing lots of street circuits or is it the new formula? Because obviously the cars are sliding all over the place. That was kind of spectacular to watch. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the reason for the rise in these safety cars? Or is it just they react differently to these incidents and street circuits can't have cranes all over them, right? So That's one thing. Uh, I think it also has something to do with safety. Mm -hmm. It's like seatbelts. You know, and, and when I was a kid, I used to ride in the back window of my right. father's car when we went to the cottage. Um, now, would you think about getting in your car without putting on a seatbelt? Absolutely and with, not. And, and with, you know, Roman, Roman uh, gross jeans in his fire um, and 
all, every year something different happens. You know, a, a driver was killed driving into the back of um, a crane at one point. Yeah. Um, so Jules Bianchi, yeah. They're just getting safer and safer and safer. Uh, right. And and it's just a safety issue. So I, I don't have a problem with, with that. I do have a problem with, as you do, with a driver working very hard to have a nice gap yeah. and then just have it completely ripped away and have yeah. to do it all over again or maybe not be able to do it all over again because he's used up his tire. Yeah, um, that's my aggregate timing thing, but that's never coming back. It's, too, never com coming it's back. too complicated right. for people. <laughs> well, especially with Liberty Media, you know, they would yeah. never do that. Yeah. Because yeah. they wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. So the other thing, reliability. Again, I mean, we talked about this before. It's sort of like the old days when you can't mm -hmm. rely on your car to finish the race. And it started in the early part of the season with Red Bull. Now Ferrari's experienced it. Mm -hmm. What do we have? We had Sainz, Leclerc, Magnussen, Joe. That's a lot of Ferraris, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, mm -hmm. I can't remember, was Schumacher out too? Or did he just crash? I can't remember. But they definitely have an issue or like this championship is going to be decided probably on who has the most reliable car of the fastest group of cars, wouldn't you say? Or is it hard uh, to say that? Do you think it'll improve and it'll just go away? I think it's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. I still have this, I still have this little thing in the back of my head that mm -hmm. says we could see a we could see a quantum shift coming up. We could see Renault right. stepping up their game or Mercedes stepping up their game. I I doubt McLaren. Mm -hmm. uh, but we could see a third party and we could also see um, something happened with Ferrari. The one thing that I've noticed that a big difference this year is in the past, we've been able to look at it and say, because of the long wheelbase Mercedes, they did mm -hmm. very well on high speed tracks and they suffered on the low speed tracks. But now with the tightening of the regulations in regards to weight and dimensions of the car, we're no longer seeing that. So now it really is. So you're correct in thinking, I think that I feel the same way that it's about reliability because now, you know, if you've got the fast car, you've got the fast car, you've got the fast car on every track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And back to what you were saying about, you know, the red flags at the end of the session, people got to put in a banker lap. The rules are such that, you know, you're limited to engines, limited to gearboxes, all these kind of things. And with a new formula, you know, we're going to have reliability issues. And I guess, we did see F1 improve reliability massively because of those rules. But I think those rules will make some teams suffer a little bit more this year. But, you know, so be it. That's just the way it's got to be. And I kind of like that we don't have close to 100% reliability, reliability yeah. like we have had. But at the same time, it's really gut-wrenching for, say, Charles Leclerc. <laughs> I mean, he yeah. was the class of the field yet again. Yeah, even over Max. Yeah, yeah. And boom, he's got, he's out. So very. I mean, his qual his final qualifying was just something to behold. Yeah, just uh, just pulled it out of his hat and went a brilliant, brilliant drive. Yeah, and so yes, it, it comes down to reliability. But and science seemed to be like he would be quicker. This like science just looks he looked quicker until the session started. The actual sessions that count. Right. So I don't know if he's suffering a little bit from how well Charles is doing because last year science beat him in points and so forth. But I think science just needs a little bit more time to adapt to this car. And Leclerc just seems to have taken to it right away. So yeah. good for him. I mean, mm -hmm. he was kind of anonymous the last couple of years as Ferrari suffered. And now, because everyone talked about him before when he move from alpha into Ferrari, but wow, he's just so good. So, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, team orders again. And uh, <laughs> what do you think of Verstappen and Perez? Because at the beginning of the race, it looked like Perez was just going to run away with it. They say that he had tire issues, <laughs> but I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think? No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> And 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 quite frankly, they've got to do it. I mean, that's 
Formula One. That's how it works. And, yes. and, and when, as we've talked about this before, when they aren't, quote, aren't doing team orders, they're doing team orders. They never yeah. stopped. Yeah. They yeah. just became hieroglyphic in the way they passed it on. We're going to plan C. Yeah. You know, whatever it might be. And that's what we saw all this nonsense about leading up to the race that Perez has a chance and so forth. The only way mm-hmm. he would ever have a chance is if he was quicker than Max all the time and he would just have to go out and do it himself. And no, the only way is if Max is terminally injured and his career <laughs> is ended. Or his okay. season's ended ended. Right. Yeah. That that would that would give him the chance, but right. that's about it. And then we saw Lando and and uh, Ricardo have a little bit of issues yeah. and I thought yeah. Lando is I don't think Lando would have done any better than Ricardo. So but Lando, I mean, that particular race, Lando is doing better overall, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't very happy that the team wouldn't let him by. And I do wonder about, you know, these, the driver relationships in the team, the number one, number two. And, you know, it's an interesting thing. Uh, Lando has earned number one from the last season and a half, right? So perhaps he was justified in feeling a little bad about that. But ultimately, I, would really I don't think like- it would make a difference. I would really like to know how much they share. Mm-hmm. I'd really like to know how much they share. Cause yeah, because in MotoGP, they say that all the riders get to see their teammates' data, the raw right. data. And if they have other teams with the same bikes, they get to see all the raw data. But in F1, I mean, we've heard about you know Rosberg and Hamilton not wanting to share. Even in MotoGP in the past, uh, Valentino Rossi would not share his data with Jorge Lorenzo as soon as he started beating him. So and Alonso's and Alonso's famous for for right. he has he has the ability to to butcher his teammates' chances he will. And the same with Nico, right? Mm-hmm. That from what I understand that anyway. And I I know from experience what it's like to have somebody at the track driving the same car mm-hmm. who's saying, Oh my God, soften up the front sway bar or whatever it may be, or you know what, you know where you're turning in on corner two? Don't do that. Right. Wait a little bit longer. Just on the inside, there's a bump, and if you hit that, it's going to help you rotate the car. Do you think that they're sharing any of that? I have no idea. Um, again, back in MotoGP, Jack Miller just lost his ride with Ducati, so he's going to KTM next season. Really? Yeah. And That's huge news. Francesco Bagnaia, or Pecco, his teammate, sent out like said i i love this guy we share all our information we help each other out i hope my new teammate is just as good as jack is so you know i just haven't seen any recent public statements from f1 drivers or teams about sharing data so i just have no idea but right. i suspect it would be yet another point of contention and mm-hmm. you know i guess different teams probably have different cultures as well right so and there's different driving styles. Yeah. I mean, look at Williams, right. for example. Latifi has said that he is he has no confidence in this new car. Albon is destroying him, absolutely. And mm-hmm. we might as well bring this up right now. Latifi apparently has lost his ride in Williams for next season, uh, replaced by Oscar. So, yeah, it's uh, that team... Is Latifi looking at Albon's data? Would that help him out or not? I just have no idea. Like, because I know, for instance, in F in MotoGP, it'd have to help him. It would well, have to help him. But there's it depends also- on how unique that driver is, though, because when the Honda riders look at Marquez's data, they just say, "I can't do that. There's no way I can do this. I can't. <laughs> if I tried right. that, I'd be on the ground, basically." Right. And Albon is. I don't know. I, it's so hard to judge drivers in bad cars, but he has scored points. He is, I think he's done amazing. So it would be beneficial to Williams to share his data with the teammate, I would think. And if those two are Oscar and Albon next season in a bad car properly, but maybe they'll improve next season, could be really interesting. Yes. So. And, and it also be a nice, a, a proper measure, you know. I Absolutely. Think- I think Latifi's probably a little bit down on himself for being at Williams for so long and just being in a crappy car for so long and thinking I'm never going to go anywhere in this sport. <laughs> and and he, and he is one of the best drivers in the world. It's that simple. But you know, you'll have to find work in other 
series, right? Where it's most F1 drivers, when they leave, they go to Le Mans or sports cars or Indy or something like that. So unless you're, unless you're a champion, right. Unless you're a champion or you have decimated your teammate, then no, he's got nowhere to go. And he's in the bottom team. You know, if you, mm. it, no, he's got nowhere to go. Nobody's going to hire Latifi. Uh, well, he has the Safina money I though. It. I mean, Williams is going to lose that, but perhaps they'll, they'll make more money off points and so forth. Right. So. Well, also when then they get rebranded as VW or Porsche. Right. They'll get all the money in the world. So who was your driver of this race? It was Lewis. Lewis? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with Pierre Gasly, the anonymous driver that we never saw, but yes. <laughs> still finished fifth. Yeah. Uh, and I bring up Gasly because, you know, Perez's contract was renewed, so he has nowhere to go, uh, at least in the Red Bull organization. And, you know, I've seen, like, We've had all these new drivers come in, in the last five years and there's just not enough spots for them to really show their talent. And it's just unfortunate because I think Gasly is, again, would do very well. I mean, he didn't do well in the Red Bull when he first started, but now I think he's much better in the mind, I guess, maturity and figuring out how to work with people and all that. And that's all he probably needed. But you know what he needed? All he needed, as soon as he left Red Bull and he was in the Toro Rosso, he kicked ass. Mm -hmm. like that right instantly and yeah. and and what does that tell you he was yeah. he was frazzled coming into f1 wasn't given enough time give him two seasons yeah. no and and on top of that what's the culture and what's the pressure that was being yeah. put on him you've got somebody like helmet marco who's just yeah they're not supporters baby, right baby they don't Hitler. support their people no, no. right They'll support Max, and then that's a much that's enough support. They have no more support for anyone else in that team, basically. So, and what about rating the race? Um, I put it at a two and a half. Yeah, I'm gonna give uh, it a three. Uh, snooze fest, wasn't it? Yeah, basically. I did fall asleep. Oh, you did. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the person I was watching with fell asleep as well. Right, right. Yeah, no, seriously, it's like a parade. And yeah, there's there you know a couple of little moments in there. There yeah. wasn't even there weren't even any nice battles to really watch. No, not were, really. No, so no. big gaps between the drivers, and they're just lapping. Yeah, you know, I, I'll guarantee you this weekend at most part of the Vintage Festival will present thousand times better event than are you going than that no okay they can't right mm -hmm. yeah all right mm -hmm. so next up we have canada so we'll have one less canadian driver next year but uh at least the canadian grand prix is back and some people call these sort of they've called that a street circuit but it's Yes, the streets are used, but it's not in the city. It's on the island, and uh, I quite like that circuit. It's very challenging, very fast, so I'm really looking forward to that race. Drivers love it. Yep. You know, there's there's some wonderful, wonderful high-speed turns. There's some lovely, lovely uh, quick right lefts that are not chicanes. Mm -hmm. And that hairpin, how can you not love that hairpin? Yeah, you know, it's the champions wall and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Very good mm -hmm. circuit. And I like that they've kept the name, the circuit de Gilles Villeneuve. And I hope that Liberty doesn't start doing what the NBA and other sports do with their arenas and their venues is let's bring in a corporate sponsor. So instead of the circuit de Gilles Villeneuve, it'll be, you know, the target right. circuit or something. Yeah. 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 Let's hope, you know, like you got to keep bit, the, the, the essence of the sport. Track. Yeah. The bit. Yeah. Uh, and that's all collapsing now, isn't it? Bitcoin. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there you go. Yeah. All right. So we'll talk to you soon, John. And thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye. Hit the like. Hit the like. Hit the, Hit the like. like. Comment. Comment below. Even though I've never seen it above. I don't know why you have to say below. It's always. It's always below. <laughs> it's always below. <laughs> Share and all that kind of stuff. Thanks. Bye bye.